Hey guys, this is Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials and the Green Engineers, and welcome back to Metal Milling Machine, DIY Metal Milling Machine 7. So I'm uploading uh, 6 right now on my second screen. So uh, that's going to take a few minutes of a little bit of lagginess, 3 minutes. So uh, I was going to do this off screen, but I don't have a chance to do so. So let's go ahead and do it now. And while we're doing it, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit more about uh, um, oh, here comes my cat and of course she's mad that I'm talking okay so let's go ahead and download this stuff so let's see flange type square type square type low flange type Square type. Okay, super heavy load, heavy load, standard block, number of blocks per rail two. Mounting from top, and then um, millimeters two inches. We want for the top. Oops, yeah, this one. Twenty-two millimeters, twenty-two inches. 22 inches that's five that's 558 so let's go ahead and go here and let's just say 550 top mounting from bottom for links distance from edge blah is fine like preload Light preload, single rail. I think just standard. I don't really need dust protection or any of this other stuff because it's going to be hard to find. Okay, so let's go ahead and view results 3D. Oh, yeah, also we're going to need to talk about this at some point. Oh, but my fault we made a mistake so this we want to do just HG series and we're gonna do each individual one that's what we're gonna do we're gonna do rail and block so we could uh, um, what's it called so we could put a standard block line preload and on this stuff type and there she blows cool so let's download as a Save that. Then let's go back. What? Oh. All right, so let's download, save. Okay, so let's upload.
Oops. Okay, so we have one is block, one's a rail. Let's go ahead and close this. Okay, so while that's uploading and everything looks good, so basically um, I did find this Ken Metal uh, calculator for force, torque, and power for slotting applications. So if you go engineering calculators, I'll show you exactly where this is at. And I didn't notice this before. And we have one here that says slotting. Hole making, thread cutting, turning, miscellaneous, z-axis milling, face milling, and milling. So you go in here, uh, this is actually for stainless. So now that we are doing three axis and we have a higher at we have a higher um, rigidity as far as the milling machine we could go a little bit harder material possibly even stainless so here uh, stainless I'm looking at 304 stainless uh, Rockwell B is 92 92 Brunel hardness this guy ultimate strength so th this is calculated from here so when you put 92 it comes up with these two affecting cutter and dimer so this is from the Grizzly that we bought uh, for and the Grizzly has nine inserts. Cutting uh, cutting feed is like 250. I'm gonna figure out more about that. I think it's like 250, 200. Radial depth of cut. Here it's asking about um, doing a, a one to one width of depth. So um, for stainless steels, high temperature alloys is 2.3. So it's quite a bit higher here uh, ratio. So um, it. Ups the it ups the amount of horsepower needed. So here, if we look at this, and we calculate, but here this is where this part gets really really confusing, is that it says reduced feed chip load, but this is the feed rate. So like I don't know how they get this feed rate at this spindle speed, right? Because two three a point seven times number of teeth times chip load point zero zero one four is three right two three eight point seven times Um, nine uh, times this is an inch per minute, right? So, um, times the other one point zero point zero zero two eight. That's six. So that's this number. But that's the issue. So this is the this is that right one. But here it says reduce feed per tooth, chip load at cut. So I don't know if this is. And here it's saying with pro, uh, productivity formula, but I don't know what that formula is. Um, number in the cuts in the flute. says radio width of cut to cutting diameter, right? Which is 0.063, which is right. Here, 131 inch pounds, torque at cutter, 22 foot pounds. And here it's saying that we need, so I'm saying that it's about a 0.6 efficiency. So we need actually 1.67 horsepower at the cutter. So we're pulling 1.67 times 750 watts. We're pulling 1200 watts. Um, divided by 120, pulling 10 amps. We're spinning 240 RPM. So it's where we have the most torque, not exactly where we have the most horsepower, because I'm not exactly sure what that, uh, what that uh, chainsaw is good at, but this is obviously higher than my weed whacker. So I would need to increase, but if we're going with the weed whacker, then we don't need to go with the BT40. BT40 has got a horsepower limit of uh, three horsepower. Is three horsepower? 
four horsepower. So we do not need we do not need that. Okay, so now that we got that, oh, another thing. Um, also, I've been doing some work on the. Um, I've been doing some work on the uh, the not this one, but this one on the cam for the uh, the shredder. So here's basically what I came up with. So um, basically, here we have our slotting tool, our um, our grizzly sliding tool. So the part is actually orientated this way. And you see that our Z is up X, Y. Obviously the X and Y direction are wrong. Well, it's actually orientated this way. At least as far as Tormach is concerned. And then if we simulate, uh, we have our stock. We have a three and a half inch round uh, cylinder. And you can see that we are cutting in. I'm gonna turn off the model you can see that we are cutting into the side and I'm doing the exact same depth of cut and uh, um, step over and spindle speed uh, compared to what we have on the Kenna Metal uh, calculator now with this we have um, we have an hour and 39 minute cut time so maybe we can find that uh, maybe we could get something with some inserts in it uh, this is probably good just to start out with. I am going to be going to the shop eventually and trying this grizzly thing out, making a shaft like this uh, on the lathe, and then having a little shoulder on it, and then uh, uh, putting a thread on it, and then um, uh, basically putting a nut, nut and bolt. Uh, at this speed, the um, the balancing is not su that crucial. It's just that the shoulder is in the right spot. And obviously, compared to the rest of this guy, the the, the, the nut and the bolt are not um, that crucial as far as extra weight. So, And we have plenty of space to put that shoulder. So that shoulder is going to be about, uh, I'm going to measure that, that shoulder I showed you on the Grizzly where it's machine flat. So I'm going to measure that, and then that's basically how big the shoulder is going to be and then it's going to be threaded from there down um, well not from there down because it needs to have a little shoulder a, a little shoulder that this thing's going to ride on so then I'll have the nut and bolt after that point I, this is a quarter inch so it's going to have a quarter inch shoulder and then a nut and bolt and then it's just going to uh, shove it in there and then I might even countersink uh, this guy a little bit uh, because I might have a slight uh, shoulder on the um, a light little radius on the part anyways so yeah so we have that so this is going to take a really really long time so we definitely need to speed that up and then we have the adaptive and adaptive is really really cool in fusion so this is a hat this is a quarter inch um, really really long obviously this is not realistic but I'm thinking of upping it to half an inch and uh, basically what this guy is doing is now um, basically roughing out this the rest of this material here. And it's taking a very, very small step down because of that quarter inch tool. And what you could see is that it's actually taking this, uh, if you could see it down here, if we pause it, you could actually see that this blade is obstructing. We can't cut anything past this blade. So the only thing we're actually cutting is we're just cutting the teeth. So you can see we're cutting the tooth and we're cutting as much as we can get to um, by ourselves, but uh, we don't have as much uh, room to go around here. So we're going around here and I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do first. I'll probably do this first and then the pocket. Um, Cause the pocket seems that it, it's gonna require a lot of horsepower. So maybe if I get rid of a lot of the material it's going to be less horsepower and then what you're seeing is the final operation which is actually when I flip the material over and it's going to do this guy here and it's going to do the rest of the part right and so but we do have one issue when it's completed oops it's just gonna it's, this red line is going to go all the way to the end so it loads it all up Man, Tiger, you're really hot. Cat sitting on my lap. She's 
making it extremely hot. It's extremely hot in here. for that um oh, it totally got rid of it now there's a hair underneath my mouse let's go as fast as we can and then i'll show you guys here at the end what happens but you can see how it's uh, taking shape there and it's okay thank you tiger you're super off okay now why is it not doing the end Okay, now it's doing the right thing. Okay, so one more time, we're gonna try to get this right. I mean, we're burning time here. We're in 15 minutes. And I wanna get these, uh, these guys onto both of our options. Okay, so now basically what you could see is that we still have this rib here that this blade is blocking and not allowing us to go in there and finish that up and obviously there's two per side so we have the same exact thing back here so we're gonna have to figure out how to get rid of that either I move this back blade or I don't have it go full 360 and I have it just slightly under so I could go back and clean this up or do something of the sorts there. That's what, kind of what I'm thinking. Obviously, I'd have to modify the model in order to do that, in order to get this system to work. But you could see that that just blocking it. But other than that, the whole entire part is made. But obviously, we're talking almost like 10 something hours. But then again, uh, I could probably get it down to maybe four hours, but you were talking four hours of rotating assembly. So that's eight hours for each for bolt for one whole shredder which is two rotating assemblies but we can um that's just starting out obviously we could increase feeds until we get to the kind of time uh, that we are looking for all right so let's go here and let's go linear rail and then we're going to call this um hgh uh, rail assembly uh, 550 millimeters now let's go ahead and create these uh, this assembly here so we're gonna drop this guy in it looks amazing we're gonna drop this guy in and we're gonna joint it it already wants to come attached but obviously we can't do that yet so Let's say okay good 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 and we're going to joint and then uh, basically what I'm thinking here I don't know exactly how because that's another important thing is that this is center of mass let's not do center of mass so let's just say there Uh oh. Okay, so let's go back. Let's set this as a rigid group. Then let's joint it. There we go. Brilliant. 
Okay, edit joint, and then let's make this a slider. Perfect. And there we go. Let's put on numero two. Let's move it here. Do same deal. Rigid group. And we're going to rotate this guy 180 degrees so that the nipple is facing downwards. That's another thing that I'm going to have to tell them is uh, send it to me with the nipple facing downwards. I mean, we don't we don't need a capture position. Don't just continue. We'll just we'll just uh, join it from the backside. And don't flip. But that's looking exactly how it's supposed to be. So, oh, but this is a seal, so this is probably supposed to be exactly tight minus a little bit. Uh oh. But why did it do that? Well, there goes my filament. I mean, the other thing I could do, oops. Oh, it has to be flipped. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Pretty strange. Oh, I know what it's doing. Anyways, I'll fix it later. Okay, and that is it. So now we could go back to this guy. Oops. And use the linear rail system that we just made. And joint it. It looks super nice. And let's go ahead and joint it. There we go. Second linear rail. Now, I don't know if it came in. I might need to be like an OBJ or something. I don't know if it's got all the material preferences on it. I mean, we'll see. And bam. All right, so now, but here's the deal. I, I don't think I could drive these joints now. Can I? Oh, I can't. Good deal. Okay, um, so now here's the question. Does it have it just says steel. It's mostly steel anyways, so properties. All right, what are we at now? About almost 350 pounds. All right, now let's get one more. Let's get to the last set that we need, which is that last rail, which is this bottom part right here. 38 inches, 38 inches is nine, let's say 950. Well, it can't actually be 950. Let's say, what is it from? Twenty-six point eight five three. That's six fifty. So let's go in here. Six fifty is something that's available. 
So let's modify configuration. Six fifty, six fifty, and view results. Three D. Download. Save. Upload. Look for it. Here is the new one. Upload. And then what we're going to do, do new one here, save HGH rail assembly 650 millimeters, save. And then let's go ahead and move this out of the way. So let's go ahead and drop two of these bad boys in here. It's one, it's two. Now we have those guys in there. It's downloaded. And then this is going to be a slider. Perfect. Perfect. There it goes. All right. Turn off joints so we don't see them. Okay. Then, once this is saved, which it is, let's go ahead and drop in the 650. This might hit, so obviously we're going to have to look at some of this stuff as far as... I mean, again, the rail could be that size, it's just we, we won't force it so that they hit each other. I mean, they're not going to hit each other anyways, it looks like. So, Shh. all right. Now, this other one. Cool. Okay. Cool. And there we go. There is our body. And then obviously, uh, need to drill holes, blah, blah, this and that. But you notice that they do not hit each other. So that is good. Obviously, we would like this to go as close to really, really close to getting the socket in there. Same deal here. and Get that socket really, really close to being in there. This one, that's fine. This one, that's fine, that's fine. This one, oh, so this is going to be an issue because this socket's going to hit the bottom. So we might need to undo these, and then when we need to fill them, we put them in. That's another thing. These will probably all be uh, eliminated for the time being. I mean, most likely they'll they'll be pretty pretty well greased, or I just pack the grease in here over time, and they pick them up. Uh, I'll have to ask them and see what they think about that or uh, some other way of packing them in there. All right, so that uh, we have a couple more minutes, so let's actually go to back. So this is good. Oh, and let's look at uh, weight. It says that we have something new. I don't know what that new thing is. 
Oh. What? like an 800 Ooh. okay well I'm gonna have to fix that then is there like a replace does not look like it so it looks like I'm gonna have to replace that in the next video but uh, yeah I just made a mistake for whatever reason there but uh, let's go ahead and look at our mass here so now we have uh, 663 1.761 about 400 pounds okay now let's go ahead and do our other assembly so let's go ahead and open up uh, layout I-beam style this general assembly let's save and then uh, I'll just update these and uh, the whole thing will update so it's not that big of an issue go back layout oops linear rails 550 goes up here and 650 goes down there. Okay, joint. Oh, but here's okay. Very strange. Wait, what did I just put in there? Hmm. Oh, I must have changed. Oh, I changed the I beam. I think that is what I did. I remember now. I changed the height. We'll we'll look into that again. I remember now. Because 22 inches is not enough. I remember why we did that now. Well, that's okay. I mean, we could always go back and pick up these bars and rejoint it. Super easy. Okay, 650. Okay. Twelve o'clock. Right now. Make sure my video is published it is okay now 
And I guess technically all that you need to do to increase the size of the build platform if you move or do whatever, oops, is to just take the, 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 these guys off very, very carefully and put bigger rails underneath these. That's basically what you need to do, it looks like. Uh, most likely, the uh, I wonder if these are hardened, because uh, I might just have them where I cut them uh, to size, and then just get them really close here, as close as possible, and take these little nipples off. And then when I need to, I just move it and uh, undo the nipple. Alrighty then, so that is basically all we need there. So let's go ahead and look at this weight, this weight here. This is 4277 divided by 16. And remember the Z is shorter, 267 inches. Oh, 267 pounds. So we're at 267 pounds. And also one of these channels that I've been watching uh, recently, uh, he said that some of those Chinese mini mills are actually about 200 pounds. So we're already over that weight. But as you can see, we have some pretty big overkill uh, um, linear rails. But these are pretty much the big, biggest linear rails that you can buy from China direct. I mean, without you know talking to the supplier for you know 200 bucks. I think it was something like that for the whole thing. I mean, we'll, we'll look at it further, but these are super, super strong. So for four horsepower, we should be getting a good a good deal here, even though it's a, a more DIY style machine. All right, so this has been Steven from Legit Tech Tutorials and Green Engineers. Thank you guys for watching uh, DIY Metal Milling Machine 7, and I will see you guys in episode 8. Uh, coming up is uh, my, my work shutdown, so we'll be doing some more videos then as well. Maybe doing some water jet video and a CO2 uh, laser cutter video as well. All right. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.